up, people? This is Jay Watts, Waddy McFly, Elvis Presley, uh, Scotty Drippin', Bobby Boom, King of Ratchet Pop, and I'm here with Q Chat right now. Tune in, baby. Uh-huh. Has made. She's a queen. This is dedicated to all my beautiful queens, all my beautiful ladies out there. She's a queen. Good queen. guys for joining another episode of the Q Chat. Today I have Jay Watts and everyone that listens to the show knows that I have a secret passion for talking to musicians. So here we are again. Mr. Jay is out of New Jersey and he has a new EP coming up and a new single called Steps. So we're going to chat it up about my favorite self-care practice, which is music. How are you doing today? All right. I'm great. I'm great. The sun is out today. It's not too cold, so I'm good. Well, ironically, there's a tornado warning where I'm at. So. <laughs> where, where are you at? I'm in Louisiana. So. Okay. All right. Yes, exact opposite. <laughs> well, prayers up, man. Prayers up. Thank you. The sun will be out later, though. Yep. So I feel like you have a new single coming up. So I definitely wanted to chat it up with you. You do have your upcoming EP. So tell us about the new single, Steps. I listened to it. It's a, it's a whole vibe. So just tell Thank us you. about the origin with that song. So it's like a... I wanted to make a love song that could be turned into a line dance without trying to make it a line dance song. Okay. (laughs) That's where like some of the words come from. And I was just vibing, to be honest. When I heard the beat, I was just like in my mode. (laughs) And then it was crazy because on the one, two step in the name, I was like at the mic doing the moves as I was recording. I was like, no, this is all right, this is all right. Yeah, it's a vibe for sure. So I wanted to ask you, so I looked up some things about you, of course. And one of the things that stood out to me was, I'll be like, this era is Bobby Brown. Now I'm old school. You know, Bobby was the, Bobby B was the king of R&B. <laughs> you know, he was. He was. Yes, he definitely was. Definitely unsung. So tell me about your whole vibe and that whole, how you want to be this era's king of R&B, Bobby Brown. Um. You know what it was? I wasn't really familiar with his music from the 90s until like when I was performing, I, people kept saying, you remind me of Bobby Brown. And it's like, I was like, why? And he's like, yo, go look him up when you get a chance. And then I started like watching all his videos and stuff. I was like, okay, I get where the comparison comes from. Like mm-hmm. it's, the, it's the energy. It's the energy yeah. around it. Who would you say are your musical influences growing up or just subconsciously? Are there any, you know, R&B greats that you feel if you listen to your music closely, you may hear like some elements of them or even if they didn't necessarily influence how you sing your music, but they still influence in another way. Who are some of those people? So I got like a wide range. It goes from rock to rap. So I got Coldplay, Sting. Uh, Michael Jackson, Prince, Linkin Park, Red Hot Chili Peppers, Kanye, Neo, Usher, and uh, Chris Brown. Okay. Okay, that's a mix for sure. So who are any of the people who you may have on a wish list that you would like to work with? Beyonce, uh, Pharrell, 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 Pharrell. (laughs) Kanye, 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 Adele, Jay Z, um, I don't want to miss anybody. Uh, mm-hmm. and Zach Fox. Okay, okay, that's definitely an eclectic mix. How long have you been into music? Is this something that has always been a dream of yours since you were a child to be a recording artist? Yes, I've been taking it serious since I was 12 years old. That was like my first time going to a studio and like recorded and everything. My mother actually took me to my first studio session. So, okay. shout out to my mom. 
Nice. How important has it been to have your family support you? Um, to me, it's like one of the most important things as you're trying to build because, I mean, those are the people you love the most. So when you got mm-hmm. their support, it's a little bit stronger, yeah. you know? Definitely, definitely. So I know that you do have your upcoming EP entitled Antidote, and the release date is at the end of this week on the 25th. So can you tell us about that EP and what to expect? So you can expect the little, uh, my visual EP that comes with it, which is dropping on Friday at noon. It's seven videos all put together like a little short film. It's kind of like my version of like an MTV video show. Mm-hmm. So it's like Jay Watts TV and then um, seven videos. Nice, nice. Nice, nice. How long did it take you to come up with everything? Um, to shoot all the videos, it took about a month. Okay. Like uh, three weeks of like straight work, finding the locations, the models, filming, editing. Yeah. So Mm -hmm. we locked in the past two months to get this done. Okay. That's not bad. And I know you're from New Jersey. Do you still currently reside there? Yes, sir. Jersey City. Okay, okay. Shout out to St. Peter's. Okay, okay. So who are some of the producers that you work with? I work with my guy, Ikenna, which is spelled I-K-X-N-N-X. Um, I work with my guy, P.O. I have a production from Reefa Music on the project. Let me make sure I'm not missing anybody. Iano Beats and my guy, 12 Keys. We've been friends for like since 2014 so I love working with him okay now another thing that I saw when I looked at your information that really struck me was a quote that said my approach to the music is genuine and the end of that quote said when all is said and done I just want to be one of the greatest entertainers of all time and I know you also mentioned how you don't really want to you know follow everybody else which I definitely thought was cool so do you find that it's like pressure to be original? Because a lot of times when you turn on the radio, a lot of songs, they, you know, they really sound alike. So do you find any pressure to be original? Um, For sure, because it takes longer for people to digest because their ears are already trained to a certain thing. Like their, their ears are trained to what's popping already. So like trying to come with a different sound, I feel like it takes just a little bit longer. That's all. Yeah. But I feel like once it connects, it connects for a long time also. Because you watch a lot of artists, they be pop- popular for two years, and then you hear about them going broke five years later. So that's another thing. Right. How do you stay genuine? You know, because like they, you brought up a good point. We all seen Unsung, and we know how a lot of things go in music right now. Like you said, sometimes people have a hit. It's radio heavy and year or two it's like where are they now then also the sad part they end up broke and a lot of people like they said in show business the word business is the longer word so how do you stay grounded and what was your education like as far as the business so that you know the business side so that you don't end up like those people so the good thing is I, I like I was at a major for three and a half years So I got to see how music really works and when the time is right to do certain things and also what not to spend money on because a lot of times a lot of money gets wasted and you think it's going to like have an ROI, but it doesn't. Yeah. So just little things like that. Mm -hmm. Like when you get some money, just put it up also. Right. No, don't try to compete in the, the swag race. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. yeah that's some good advice for sure and I've talked to a lot of musicians on the show and a lot of times we talk about the same thing how maybe sometimes people are more they think maybe more of having a hit as opposed to having a classic you know right. like I could turn on the radio and hear music from 20 30 years ago even older than that that everybody resonates with so when you come up with your, your music what's your process 
you know, is that in the back of your mind sometimes? Like, okay, I want to make something that's really going to stick with people as opposed to what may be a radio hit. I feel like even the people that made radio hits weren't going into the song trying to make a hit. I feel like Mm -hmm. it's one of them things like that just like God lets happen, you know? Yeah. Because I I never seen an interview where a person was like, yo, I went in there and I said this was going to be a hit and it was a hit. I never seen nobody say that. So I feel like it's always the vibe. And you kind of feel when the vibe is really right. right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so I know also reading about you that you said that you had humble beginnings so how was your childhood in New Jersey I'm from one of the smallest towns in South Jersey so um, we used to travel to Philly a lot Delaware a lot just that area will have you grounded because it's like I guess it brings out your hustle. Yeah. You know, like you're really trying to, like you want to make it out of there, you know? Right. Um, And plus I always have my family around. Like to this day, like some, some of my cousins are my best friends still, mm-hmm. you know? So I stay around my family as much as possible. Yeah. That's important to be, I think, I would think that, you know, helped you stay grounded. So are you an independent artist right now? Yes. Okay. Yes. How was that experience? Because I know a lot of people say that it's just a better vibe. You know, not everybody, but I know I've had heard positive things about people being on independent labels and being independent artists. So I'm, I'm working with a great indie company right now, and I love the work they're doing. So it's just, I guess, when there is a focus and, like, you're executing, like, the goals, I feel like any place can work. But there has to be a focus first, you know, because you can be at a major, but it's not really a focus. And it's like you're there and it's cool to tell people. But like once. Yeah. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Now, I know versus has been something that's been really popular since the pandemic. And the last verses they had, I believe, was the one with Music Soul Child and Anthony Hamilton. Right. So I always try to ask people this question sometimes. What would you think would be your dream versus? It could be dead or alive artist. Is it too soon to answer that? No, you can. Whoever you think. My dream verses. Mm-hmm. Later on, I will want to go with Neo. Okay. Just so I could uh, be a fan at the same time, you know? And mm-hmm. like go bounce back and forth off the hits. That would be fire. Okay. That's not bad, actually. I know um, Raheem Devon, I interviewed him and a lot of people, he does a lot of lives. And a lot of people always in the lives asking him who would he go against. And no one could think of anybody. <laughs> 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 I thought yeah. him and Anthony Hamilton would have been good too. I personally thought it would have been good if it was him and Music Soul Child, is what I always thought in my mind. Recently right. I thought about it, and I think him and Avant actually would be a good match, but you know, one can dream. <laughs> <laughs> so I know you do have your new EP coming up. What else is on the books for you? Like, do you have plans to go on tour? Any live shows? What else is next for you? Definitely plans for touring, um, mm-hmm. hopefully by May. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm getting ready for the second project, man. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm ready to work on the next one, so. Okay. Can you tell us a little bit about the next one? Like, what do you have in mind? What's your vision? I haven't started. <laughs> but you got it. Uh, once I, I'm one of those people, once I get to work, I'm locked in. So I'll probably mm-hmm. be starting on that by next week. But I do plan on keeping, like, this visual album thing going. Yeah. So the next time I just want to up the bar mm-hmm. and probably have some action and stuff going on, have more of a storyline in the next one. So and make it like a short film for real. OK, who are some of the people that you work with? Anybody notable that you've worked with so far? That has been a great experience. Um, Just several producers and Jason Flom alone, like he discovered 
Katy Perry, Lord, oh, Kid Rock, you know, like just working with people like that and getting the game and seeing how humble they are living at the top of a <laughs> building in Times Square. You know, like when you meet people like that, that's humble, like you, you so good at. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Now, how old are you? I am 100. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't mind me asking, well, really, I ask this, what advice do you have for, you know, younger people who, like, I know you said you had that interest in bug and you had that, your support from your mother as early as they swelled. So what advice do you have for younger people who have aspirations to join a music business? Like a lot of things that you said are really well-grounded, especially the business part. Don't waste your money you know, don't try and do all that swag stuff and end up broke. So what mm -hmm. advice would you have for these younger people that want to be in this business? So I'll say my main th three things, right? Pray, meditate, and like, make sure you got like visions of where you want to go. Like for me, I do like Photoshop. I'll Photoshop something I want to do like later on, you know, like 10 million streams on this. Like I'll Photoshop it so I can, when I'm meditating, I got something to look at. And mm -hmm. also like everybody around you is not going to support you, right? Yeah. So don't let their doubt start affecting how you feel about yourself. If you feel like mm -hmm. you got it, you just got to keep working at it, you know? And if you got music and you're scared about putting it out, just put it out and don't be discouraged when only 10 people like it. Just keep yeah. putting it out. Because honestly, in this age, like somebody that's well known will see it eventually that can help with what you're doing. So I just say keep keep going. Right, right. I agree. Now, my last question I do want to ask you on my platform, in addition to music, we do talk about self-love. So I do feel that self-love is what everyone needs to have that confidence to follow your dreams, like you said, to really cancel out the negative noise and just to believe in yourself, to meditate, manifest, and claim your dreams. So how important has self-love been in your life and where you are now? Uh, for me, like, I would say meditation saved my mental when I first got in the industry. You know, like, when you do this deal and you get around a bunch of new people and, like, you start thinking everyone's your friend and it's like, it's a lot, you know, it's a lot of fake stuff that goes on. So in order to stay sane and stay grounded with it, I had to start meditating every day yeah. to like, just get back to myself and with my aura, you know? Right. So that's everything for me. I do it every day mm. before I go to sleep and when I wake up. Right. Plus, last thing, when you do it, as soon as you wake up, you're going to have a better day for sure. Mm. That's true. It sets the tone for sure. And that is important. So I definitely thank you for your time. But before we end everything, tell everybody how they can connect with you, where they can find you on social media and remind everybody again how they can listen to this single steps and how they can get that EP this upcoming Friday. OK, so I'm Jay Watts. My social handles are at I'm Jay Watts, letter I, letter M, J-A-Y-W-A-T-T-S. Um, Antidote EP is dropping Friday at midnight. The visual EP is dropping on all streaming platforms, 12 p.m. Friday, March 25th. Make sure y'all go check it out. This is my first body of work, so I'm excited. I hope y'all love it, and I hope you enjoy the visual EP. Awesome. Thank you. I wish you much success. I love your whole vibe. You're <laughs> and you're definitely going to go far. You are going to be the next Bobby Brown. Just don't ah. forget the little people. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Girl. I will never. <laughs> Thank you so much. You guys can catch this episode and more. Of course, just go to www.thecutechat.com. You guys know I love talking to musicians. So definitely check out this episode with Jay Watts and many more. And guys, remember, whatever you're doing, put on some good music. It'll definitely change your vibe. It'll fill your heart and it'll make you feel good. And that's what we all need. So be safe and make sure you guys go love yourself. That must have did this beat.